yes. So, um, so we're actually seeing more and more um, the idea of, I guess, impact investing um, and in Māori using frameworks to be able to consider the more holistic environment and, and, and effects when they're investing. So um, they will look at the commercial return, yes. They will look at the social returns. Does it employ their people? Does it have an impact on the environment? Um, does it provide an opportunity to develop their own internal ca capacity? Um, if you're going into a hotel, can you bring along someone and put them on the board so that we can then learn more and then hopefully in the future we can do those operations all by ourselves. So we've seen that more and more. Um, and obviously there'll be times where you need to decide because there's no, well there aren't perfect opportunities that tick all the boxes. And so you have to compromise and, and the job of the, the board or the governance table is to say what are we looking to achieve and what's in our best interest for the next lot of investments. Um, because they have to balance, at the end of the day, they still have to balance being able to commercially support other endeavours. <laughs> and so it's trying to decide which one are you prioritising um, and, and whether you spread that across. So, as I said, that's, been, that's more and more at the thought process and you're actually getting tools that people will have um, a matrix or a framework <coughs> that they put in their investment proposals for the board to consider. And, and yeah, and, and I, I guess the other reason they're doing that is because it means when they go to the AGMs and they stand up and present to the people, then they're in a more comfortable position to mm. answer the questions from, from the wider audience eh? and they don't just have to say, well, talk to the social arm, talk to the social arm. The commercial entity should be able to start to talk on behalf of the social arm at times or talk alongside them. How a non maori can contribute towards the innovations of this, uh, you know, enterprising and you know, the, the development and the for the maori assets. What are the opportunities for a non maori So I guess I'll go back to um, the, the first point as an example for me, which is collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of maori are doing that. NZ Super, as I said, I mean NZ Super is not maori but they have a resource that can work alongside the resource that we have. Well, they've got access to something that we don't have. So if you as non Māori bring along a skill set, um, or perhaps you bring along uh, funding that we don't often have, um, a lot of our entities have land, but not as much cash. Um, the key thing I guess for our iwi to decide is what is that collaboration, what does that partnership look like? Do we, do we want to uh, retain majority uh, ownership, those sort of things, like any business deal. Um, so back home we're seeing uh, our entities look at hotel developments. It's not because we have a history in hotel developments, but because we see a commercial opportunity there, we see the potential to employ our people, we see that having a hotel, whilst you might say, well what does that mean to Māori? Well if you go into Rotorua and you see a hotel and it's got te arawa, then that establishes our presence. And then we just need to consider, so who are the best strategic partners to come alongside us? So that means you are open to take the innovative ideas from the non-mobile? Oh, for sure, yep. One more question, this one. Sorry. Kia ora. Um, you talked about Um, so we are, we, I'm actually seeing entities that are trying to consider how they can, um, I guess, allocate funding that almost becomes uh, venture capital funding for their, you know, for uh, applicants. Um, that's one way of doing it is to, and I think, again, probably someone like Ngai Tahu, um, I think is considering that. And, and I refer to the big guys because, like with a lot of things, 
And as I mentioned, when you get to a position that you're commercially more robust, then you've got more options. Um, so often it's the ngaitahu, the tainui, that are the leaders in these sort of spaces. Wakatu, probably. Um, and so I think w things that need to happen before you do that is to set up proper frameworks. You know, so that, yes, we're willing to invest in our entrepreneurs, but we've got a rigorous vetting process or we've got a framework or we've got, just like you go to a bank, you know, there's processes and there's um, there, uh, almost an application form, a tick box that you need to meet. And I think that's what they need to do first. Like anything, maybe as they get more comfortable with the process, then they can free things up a bit. But initially, that would, from a risk management point of view, that would be what I would be saying to our entity. <laughs> you were talking about um, diversification and you know, how, how much, I'm looking at this in, in terms of um, you get um, sort of a, 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 some money there, for, especially around research, and you've got you know, a whole lot of different entities or ITPs going into the same, I shouldn't say trough, but going into the same place to, um, so how do, how do you translate that um, uh, that that pool of money so that it, it, it actually um, improves or encourages more innovation and more um, diversity as opposed to um, you know you and us you know that, and that's that's something that I sort of noticed um, the last few years that. You know, suddenly you're friends, but when money's involved, there's, there seems to be a bit of a wet air there around, um, <coughs> so we're doing the same thing and we want the same, we have the same heart for our community, but the structure that's in there seems to prevent that continuing. Does that, does that make sense? Uh. to be more um, uh, collaborative and, more, and using, developing more innovation, how do we collectively um, partner so that we're able to use that, that fund or how can that fund change so that we, we can collectively bring all our skills together for, for Tōrauro, for Takurauro, how can we, how can we um, translate that whakatauraki, those principles into real life? Because it always turns back to, oh, we've got the money now, and you know, sorry, you guys, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, the driver of collaboration from an investment point of view is that each partner brings something to the table. Um, so it's not just collaboration for the sake of collaboration. Um, and, and what they might bring to the, or maybe the collaboration, there could be a comp an element of, well, it's a strategic partnership because we know down the line there will be other opportunities that this partner might bring, or by aligning with them now, it makes us look. So there's always a strategic play, mm -hmm. generally. And so if I'm talking to your question, I think um, then someone has to bring, each, each partner has to bring something to the table. You can't just say, well, let's collaborate. Why? Because I'd like to. What are you bringing any better that's going to make this collaboration a stronger effort than if we just did it by ourselves? Um, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, that's quite a, I wouldn't say ruthless, but, but that's the, it's generally the, the driver behind collaboration is because everybody sees a mutual benefit to it. And I think why I can't see why it would be any different in research. And it's not necessarily that you bring something to the specific research project, but you bring some other um, benefit for this partner to align with you. So I'm probably not addressing your question. Yeah, yeah I can talk to you <laughs> offline and uh, on a general quarter on that. Yeah.
har inte hunnit kärt på er till att det är skydd hockey var hockey var för några veckor. Thank 
Kukura has a celebrated research and academic career, working in community, social, and indigenous psychologies with a specific focus on Māori well-being and self-determination. Her research in recent years has focused on tangi, Māori ways of mourning, traditional body modification, ethnic status as a stressor, Māori identity development, cultural safety and competence, Māori mental health and recovery, social and economic determinants of health, homelessness, relational health and social connectedness. Busy lady. <laughs> and we come from the same place actually. <laughs> Tonga Bay, which has been in the news lately because of all the flooding. Psychologist, yeah? You know, I trained as a psychologist. 
Um, and so uh, I, I think I've got some understanding of, of people, if I haven't got any understanding of people by now then, then after 30 years doing the psychology bit, I probably lost case. Um, uh, but as a director, a co-director, along with my, um, my partner um, co-director, Jacinta Ruru, based in um, out of Otago, uh, we have to kind of like be a jack of all trades. Um, we've got to know a little bit about everything and about everybody in relation to what they're all doing and what they're all interested in. Um, and so I know a little bit about a lot of things, uh, but I am a psychologist. And the people that I work, work with are the experts in their areas. And I think that NAPA is a really respectful uh, organisation in that regard um, because we actually respect the expertise and the experience that pe people bring to the table. Uh, if you can't do that, then, then collaboration becomes a bit difficult. Yes, we should have arguments and disagreements and walkouts and, and slinging matches. Yes, we should have that because what that means is that we are talking, we're engaged, we're passionate about what we're doing. We want to find answers. We want to find ways to move forward. Um, but if there's no respect within those um, encounters, uh, then you probably will come out a little bit worse for wear at the uh, other end of um, the equation. Um, I'm really pleased to say that um, NAPA does a great, great job in that respect. Um, so our partner organisations, we've got 21 partner organisations throughout New Zealand, uh, something like 150 researchers growing by the day, I think we're up to about 180 odd uh, researchers. We've got something like around about 180 odd contracts uh, with, um, with researchers, uh, with our partner ent entities and the like, uh, and increasingly a whole plethora of MOUs, statements of intents, uh, that we use to make explicit the nature of our relationships with people who want to collaborate with us. Oftentimes it is good to actually have a piece of people like getting married, you know? You know, where's the marriage certificate and what does it say? Because <laughs> um, I know what I want to get. You know, um, and if I ain't getting it, then, um, you know, you know, think about that for a while. <laughs> uh, so it's really important to be clear about why we're in relationship, what we want to get out of those relationships, how long we might stay in relationship, um, and um, who the go-to people are, etc., etc. So this is uh, our 21 partners. Um, we have a board. Somewhere, where are they? Where's the board? Uh, so, um, Sir T. Penair from the South, uh, Good Ngati Fakoe Man, um, uh, Brooke, uh, Scotty Morrison, um, Rawunya out of um, BUW, uh, PBC Māori, uh, Pane Keiha AUT, um, Leonie Pihama, University of Waikato, Jim Medicine. Um, director of Research, University of Auckland, and two um, community members, subcontractors, or, or, and they're both contractors within their own right, Jane Metson and Amokuda uh, Kafuru. And they uh, are our board. They help us uh, set strategic direction, uh, but they also help us to uh, remain in conversation in circles that they're in uh, as well. So, Ngāpai has been in existence for around about 15 years and we, can, we intend to stay that way for at least another 15 years and beyond. Um, moving on to just um, our, um, our um, research um, leadership team. Again, a whole bunch of people from across a whole bunch of institutions in New Zealand um, doing all sorts of fantastic and wonderful things. So there's Jacinta and I. Co-directors, I'm based in the North Auckland, Jacinta's based in South Otago, strategically so. Uh, Poi uh, also out of Otago, coming on board uh, as of 1st of July um, as a Deputy de Director um, with us, but with a responsibility for Te Reo Tikanga. Daniel Patrick is our Executive um, Director. Um, he He's, he's a wonderful man. If, if it wasn't for Daniel Patrick, someone to actually manage 
all these relationships and contracts and research and uh, everything else that's going on, um, I would be greater than what I am. Um, Paul de Sharples, um, Tikana and Te Reo, um, theme. Uh,